All right. This is my second video on this 29 horse FD whatever 7091 digital fuel injection change from the 20 horse Kawasaki. And uh, mainly it's for my new Grizzly Adams buddy. Uh, they call him the Rock Doctor 07, but I think he's so far up north there that I just call him Grizzly Adams. Uh, so anyways, here's where I'm at now, okay? I'm working on this clutch and lineup assembly from the driven clutch and the primary clutch here. And what I'm doing is my thought process is going like this. This engine is a little bigger than that engine, right? So what's common to this power plate, the blue bracket, the power plate bracket, is common to the transmission that they were put on together. The center lines of these holes are common between both engines, but the flange, even though the flange had to move back here, in the back, actually the whole center lines are roughly the same. I had a bore model a little bit. It, it went up to a smaller, uh, a larger size bolt, but the center lines, you know, remain the same. So that screw under there where my finger is, the center line of that on, on this engine is there with my cam work now, right? I'm just an amateur here. Okay. That screw there to the crankshaft relationship, the center line of that screw, right, is relative to this also. That screw, this, you know, same center lines, right? This surface here, along the front here, is running with the surface. Let me get my pointer now. Look, I'm just fancy. I need to get a helmet cam like uh, Grizzly Adams has. Okay, this right here, that surface right there, look how fancy that is. I'm pointing out like a doggone professor. That surface there and that surface there are common features, right? They, they put the bolts real close to the edge within a, you know, a minimal distance, very, very close to each other. So that's what I, I used to set this up. Originally, I was using the end of the crank. Yeah. The end of the crank, you know, and the end of the crank here, back to this, you know, common, you know, center line of that bolt under there, that would relate my power plate back to my transmission, right? Problem is, there's an air gap at the end of this, so it's really not relative, you know. Let me look at these little quick drawings I've been doing, right? So, here was my first line of thinking there. I don't know if you can see that. But you might be able to stop the video and take a peek at that somehow, possibly. Maybe I turn it this way and you kind of get on your desk sideways and look at it sideways. Unless you've got some fancy rotating thing. Okay. That was my first process of thinking, right? Then, I got down to here, where when I recognized that there was an air gap at the end of that crank and that this nets out in the back, then I realized, okay, I have to cut, put the primary clutch on the lathe and cut a radius right there that's a tad bit larger than the radius that is on my new crankshaft right here. If I do that, then it's going to net out on this flat point here past the tangent. These are mating surfaces. It's meant to zero out. So, one of the first resolutions was to take the old clutch matic here and put, take it here, and I'm going to have to have that, you know, put on a lathe and, and put a radius on there. So this surface were made out against that. So then my thinking for my critical dimensions and my key dimensions were, again, like I say, you can stop your video and take a look at this. And you know, well, one thing, a word of caution, right, like lawyers say, right, uh, don't try this at home is one simple way to look at it, but I haven't worked all this out, so this is all theoretical right now. So if I was anybody looking at this video, I'd kind of wait till I get my thing fired up and try it out before I went and followed through. So I'm not, you know, responsible for your stupidity and blah, 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 blah. So anyways, get back to what we're talking about here. So, that surface there, right? From here to here. Okay. Originally, about 1 and 1 16th to the back surface of my clutch. The, the new, when I slide it down the clutch, 2 and an eighth, right? 2 and an eighth where, you know, when I slide that on. Okay, so i got to make up that difference, right? Difference is 1 and 1 16th is the difference that I got to make up to put this from this flat position of that plane there to the back side of my clutch. And then when I say back side of my clutch, I'm saying this plane here in the back side of my clutch. 
see that surface there? Because that surface there, right, is what I'm showing in my little drawing relative to this surface here, right? Because we already said that this bolt here in the center line going front to rear of my crank, you know, is roughly the same spot, except these ears are longer on the, on the ends of this direction. They're a little bit longer, so I had to re-weld the bracket here, right? This stuff is a little bit longer back here, but actually where the holes are, believe it or not, we're in the same position, just a larger bolt. So that's one thing that has to be done there. Okay. So, originally when I looked at this thing, I come up again, get on your desk sideways, right? Put your, you know, make sure you're breathing good. Don't sue me because you, you, you had a heart attack. Uh, so, the issues I identified were the length of the crankshaft was different, right? That was one issue. The radius on the end of the crank in here was another issue, right? Uh, the, the, well, we said the length of the crank, the radius, right? Uh, what is another issue, too? I have to put it Oh, then if you look at this, check this out. You can even stop the YouTube there if you want for a second. Uh, there's a relief on the trans shaft there. See, so if we start spacing the trans shaft out, we can only go so much because this, I don't know if you can see it on here, actually has a little relief on it, right? It's not all the same. Okay? But luckily, luckily, the majority of this rides out here, the loads out here, and it looks like I have about 3 16 of an inch, even when I space this out 9 16 of an inch, right? Because that's another resolution, is to put a sleeve on this, an additional sleeve, along with this one, that's 9 16 of an inch. Okay, so then when I slide my clutch on, my driven clutch, this guy here, See, if I had one of the fancy helmet cans, man, I just, you know, I can't afford that stuff. I don't make the Grizzly Adams kind of money. Okay, so, anyway, see this right here? I got to space it out, right? But like I say, there's every leaf. It does sit up on there a lot. Majority of the load is taking place here towards this side. If you look at that, in there, I don't know if you can see it, 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 it automatically is kind of hanging off this side anyway, so going to have to get a longer bolt for this. I'm going to have to machine a spacer, a 9 16 cent spacer for there. Right? I'm going to have to cut my crankshaft by 5 eighths of an inch. A half inch when I take this telescopic gauge and put it in the back, right? And touch it up against that tangent, right? And push my clutch up in there. I, ha I can only go a half inch before my back of my clutch hits this anyways. But since there, I found out that there's an air gap on the original design here, a purposeful air gap, that if I cut 5 eighths, it's going to net out back here. Again, i got to cut a radius on my clutch, primary clutch. going to have an air gap here, right? And it's going to be back similar. But it still didn't get me to the 1 and 1 16th that I needed. When you go back to this drawing, if you can understand it, this might primary clutch, my crankshaft, my block, and a plan view, a top view, right? This is that bolt I kept pointing to when you flip the engine over, right? So that dimension I need to get back to is that 1 and 1 16th. So I had 2 and 1 eighth there. I had a 1 and 1 16th was a difference. 2 and 1 eighth was a new setup, right? Just as is. Trying to put it on there, right? So the difference. So, basically, if I take that, so maybe I got this all wrong, but minus a half inch, I'm down to 1 and 5 eighths. Made here. You guys can check me on this too. Maybe I'm a moron or something. Maybe I got this all wrong. But minus a half inch, I'm down to one and five eighths. Right? So, then if I take the one and five eighths, minus the one and one sixteenth is where I need it to be, I'm at the nine sixteenth spacer that I need on my driven clutch. Which is that driven clutch? and the driver clutch. Like I say, I'm, I'm not really, don't have a ton of experience with these motorcycle or snowmobile type of clutches. I mean, what we're talking about here, but I'm kind of just going by what is, what's common between the old and the new design. And my trans has always been there. My power pack is there. So what's common between my new engine and my old engine? And then from there, the cross car, cross vehicle, which is do 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 this way, right? That's my finger now. Don't think I'm weird or nothing. Uh, so the difference there, I try to relate back to this. So by doing that, uh, ultimately, the resolutions 